Good evening, everybody. This is Mr. Watson, academic principal. I'm here tonight with Mr. Pius, our digital learning director in information technology, Ms. Kroll, our lead school nurse, and Mr. Robert Watt, our career vocational technical principal. And we're here tonight for our second welcome back orientation for upperclassmen and families to talk about the reopening of Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech, which will happen on Wednesday, September 16th, just two days from now. I'd like to start with some school expectations. Uh, as a reminder to everybody watching, there has been no change to the school day. The school day will remain from 7.30 a.m. to 2.31 p.m. And attendance is expected both during your in-person days in your career vocational technical shops, as well as during your remote days, which will occur in some of your shop days, as well as your academics. When you arrive to school, it will look very different from what it's looked like in the past. Students will be immediately brought down towards their shop areas where they will wait for their instructors at 7.30 to arrive. Teaching assistants and administrators will be stationed throughout the school building and will be there to supervise students in the morning prior to the instructional day beginning. If you were to arrive by bus, you will continue to come around the back of the school and be directed to the main entrance and ushered directly down to your shop area. If you arrive by a parent guardian or other vehicle drop off, you will also enter through the Ashley Boulevard entrance and be directed into school by security through the front of the school. Lunch will be a grab and go bag, which is available for purchase. And as you can see, uh, families have the ability to put money on their students ID account through my school bucks, uh, both online and through the app. If you have not been notified of your school for its eligibility of free or reduced lunch, please visit the My School Bucks app in order to submit your application. Finally, the last expectation is students are going to be responsible for checking their Greater New Bedford Vote Tech email on a regular basis, especially during remote days. That provides the best vehicle for teachers and instructors, administrators, and counselors to be able to reach students to ensure that their learning is taking place on a regular basis. So while I mentioned that the school day begins at 7.30, attendance will look differently depending on where students are in their rotation. For example, students who are coming to school in person for their career vocational technical program will have their attendance taken as normal by their instructors between 7.30 and 7.40 a.m. when school officially begins. You must be in shop on time to be considered present. Students who are learning remotely for shop those days must be logged into their Google Classroom or, or platform with their instructor between 7.40 and 8 a.m. to be considered present. The instructor or teaching assistant will provide directions and assignments for all students who are learning remotely at that time. In academics, which we'll talk about momentarily, while the school day starts at 7.30, that first hour is for student independent work time chance to complete homework assignments, email teachers or counselors, and to ready themselves for the school day. The official daily attendance for students and academics will be taken at 8.30 when they log into their first period class. Tardiness, unexcused absences, will be followed up with all parents or guardians by the attendance office, and discipline procedures that are outlined in the student handbook will be followed. For parents and guardians, if a student is absent, you're reminded to dial extension 734 as you would during any in-person day. Report the student's first and last name, ID number, and reason for the absence. And finally, if a student needs to be dismissed from school, parents and guardians, families are reminded that the school will only dismiss people who are listed on the emergency 10A contact form. They will be required to show identification and the student will be dismissed at that time. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about the district expectation sheet that has been mailed home the last couple of weeks with the parent newsletter. It was also included today in the principal's letter sent home this afternoon. Along the left column reviews the district expectations for in-person learning days. We've talked already a little bit about attendance. Attendance will be taken in every class period 
and reported as required by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Social distancing will be practiced and adhered to at all times following state health guidelines. Parents and students should know that the school expects that all students will be wearing masks covering their nose and mouth at all times. We are all members of the community. We live in the communities that we reside here in Dartmouth, New Bedford, and Fairhaven. And we've likely seen people who haven't practiced social distancing or mask wearing on a regular basis. All must know that that cannot happen at Greater New Bedford Vote Tech. All masks must be properly worn at all times during the school day when social distancing cannot be accomplished. It's important to note that during phase one, movement throughout the school building will be severely limited to ensure that students remain in the designated areas during as much of the day as possible. While we know this will be different for kids and our, our teaching staff, it is necessary during the first phase reopening for the school for us to be able to monitor health and science data in our area, as well as reopening the school building successfully and safely for all students and teachers. So be mindful of other people in your spaces. To reduce the spread of COVID-19, we expect that all people in the building will adhere to social distancing guidelines and follow all safety precautions that are both outlined in our reopening plan and have been regularly communicated to parents and students. Students will be reminded that they should be sanitizing and washing their hands throughout the school day. The school has added a number of sinks, uh, both in the entranceways and the cafeteria and other common areas as well as the sanitation stations that are available in many of our shop areas. And finally, students riding the bus. The bus is a privilege. We need to make sure that all of the guidelines that have been listed by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education in their July 23rd email to all schools are consistently being followed on the school bus. Students are reminded they should follow the directions of the bus driver, and if they have any specific concerns to address those with administrators upon arrival to the school. Being on the bus, we expect students will listen to the bus drivers, be wearing masks and following all expectations. On the right side of our sheet, we talk about remote learning and home expectations. And again, we remind all students that attendance will be taken in each and every class period by their instructors. All devices that are used for remote learning must have a working camera and microphone, and both must be turned on at all times. Teachers may ask students to mute accordingly, depending on the lesson. While we're learning remotely, students are reminded that they must dress, act, and speak appropriately for all classes and be in compliance with all school guidelines outlined in the handbook. This is no different than if we were in full in-person instruction for both academics and career technical education. As I mentioned at the outset, students are reminded that one of the big challenges with remote learning will be for them to check their email in Google Classroom hourly during the school day so that teacher updates and emails about assignments and support sessions can be effectively communicated to them. This is all about trying to make sure that students have the opportunity to learn and grow and make progress towards graduation and promotional requirements. As you likely noted from our reopening plan, we have chosen that while the school day will have only three live classes in academics each day, which I'll talk about momentarily, it will also include asynchronous or independent work for students with teacher support sessions in the afternoon. Teachers will communicate to students, those students who must attend those support sessions. They are not optional for students. They are at teacher discretion and designed to be able to provide the support necessary for students to make content progress towards all learning goals. We have also built in 15 minutes in between each of our live synchronous periods. That is the time for students to get a snack, go to the bathroom, communicate with their parents or guardians, text their friends, etc. Those 15 minutes have been built in to ensure that students have the time to be able to accomplish those things and also to give themselves a quick mental break before being ready for the next class period. While in class, students are encouraged to ask questions of their teachers, reminded to take notes, participate fully, and pay attention to what the teachers are asking them to do.
So for all of our returning students, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, you are aware that the school operates on a six-day cycle. Wednesday, September 16th, two days from now, is day one of cycle one. Cycle one will continue on September 17th, September 18th, and then the following week on September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Those are the first six days of the school year, and they comprise of cycle one. On September 24th, we will begin cycle two, and that will be day one. And that cycle will also continue for six days. The link that's included within this slot will also give us the cycle calendar for the entire year. That has also been included in the weekly principals letters, will continue to be included, and will be available on this PowerPoint when it is placed online and sent home to all parents. Here is the slide that talks about our CVTE education plan. Again, for any freshmen, parents, or students that are listening, the Shop Exploratory Program will be in person for all six days. This will allow students the opportunity to spend three days in each of their exploratory programs, two per cycle, and maximize the opportunity to see as many of our career vocational technical programs as they possibly can. Students in grades 10, 11, and 12 the shop experience looks a little bit different. You will be in person for three of your six days, while your remaining three days will be remote. You have likely noticed that students have been assigned to either the green or gold cohort. Students in the green cohort will come to school on days one, two, and three of their shop cycle. Students in the gold cohort will learn remotely on those first three days and come to school on days four, five, and six of their shop cycle. So for example, sophomore, junior, and senior students who will begin the school year on Wednesday in shop, those students in the green cohort are expected to be in person Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week, while students in the gold cohort beginning in shop, will learn remotely with their instructors and teaching assistants. Next week, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, students in the gold cohort who are beginning the year in shop will come to school, while students in the green cohort will learn remotely. During the remote portion of your shop cycle, Students are expected to be logged on to the computer with their instructors by 8 a.m. We strongly recommend that students begin that process by quarter of eight so the teachers can take attendance and provide daily instructions and expectations for what students must be able to complete remotely. Again, all Division II grade nine students who are starting in shop will come to school on September 16th as well. Students are reminded that during their remote days, they will have additional check-ins after their 8 a.m. login with shop instructors and or teaching assistants. And the times for those check-ins will be provided by the instructors during the morning check-in. So how do you know what cohort you're in? Well, the slide that you are looking at right now is from the Student Aspen Portal. Under my info, under your record and details, you will see on the right side of the screen an in-person group. That will say either green or gold. That is the cohort that you will attend while your group is in shop. So again, a quick reminder for the first cycle, students that are beginning the year in shop in the green cohort, you will be in school on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week, and you will learn remotely on Monday, September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Students who are beginning the school year in shop, but in the gold cohort, you will be learning remotely this Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and return to in-person school 
next Monday, September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. This is what the schedule will look like. You'll note the green on the left side of the screen for those in-person days, and the gold student in-person days are days four, five, and six. Lunch will vary as the lunch times have been configured to ensure that there are no more than 160 students in the lunchroom, six feet apart, sitting at tables to ensure that social distancing guidelines and recommendations can be followed. Uh, there will be uh, more lunch shifts than what have, has happened in the past. Students will be escorted to and from lunch by the security and assistant principal's office. And that way we can make sure that all recommendations that have been placed upon the school are being followed on a regular basis. This is what a remote day will look like for students. You'll note on the left side that the gold cohort of students in shop will start remotely. There will be a student check-in by 8 a.m. There will be shop assignments provided as well as student check-ins, which will times of those will be communicated in the morning uh, to all students so that students can make progress on their assignments and instructors can monitor that progress during the day. As you know, during phase one of our reopening plan, academics will be conducted completely remotely. So students who are assigned to division one will begin their academic rotations this Wednesday, September 16th. Academics will feature three live synchronous classes that will run daily from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. As I mentioned at the outset, the first hour of school from 7.30 to 8.30 is student independent or asynchronous work time. The school expects that students will use that hour to prepare for the school day ahead. That may mean completing homework assignments that are due later that morning. It may mean reaching out to teachers, guidance counselors, administrators, or other support personnel to provide you the necessary support you may need to meet with success. Teachers with students who are beginning the year academically sent instructions by Google Meet or other platform invites to students today. If you did not receive those for all of your classes, you should expect to receive them tomorrow during the school day. If you do not receive them during the school day, please notify the school. Here is what the schedule looks like for academics. And I'd like to take a couple of minutes with you to walk through this. Again, you'll note on the top left-hand corner from 7.30 to 8.30 every day is the student independent or asynchronous learning format. That is for students to prepare themselves for the school day that lies ahead. On Wednesday, which is day one, at 8.30 in the morning, students will be expected to log into their block one academic class. That class will go for one hour, and at 9.30, students will take a 15-minute break before beginning their block two class at 9.45 a.m. Students will remain in their block two class until 10.45, at which time they will take another 15-minute break. The final live synchronous class for Wednesday will run from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. At 12 o'clock, all academic students and teachers will take their 30-minute lunch break. The afternoon sessions will look differently for all kids. Some students, back this up a little bit, some students will be called upon by their instructors to return for teacher tutoring sessions. For example, from 12.30 to 1 o'clock on Wednesday, students from block one whose teacher requests them to return will be asked to come back to that class period. So slide back, I made an error there. So again, students in the independent format for block one, that's the same class that we had at 8.30 in the morning. So a, a teacher may ask a student who was unable to answer questions during the class period or who didn't complete the homework assignment 
or looked as though they may be struggling with some of the material to return at 1230 so that they could get additional supports provided by the instructor to make sure the student is making progress. This is not necessarily or shouldn't be viewed by students as a punishment. This is viewed as a need to make sure that students get the support they need to be able to make progress. You know, we're asked often, can all students learn? The answer to that question is yes, but we also know that all students learn differently. And so some students may require additional support to make progress. That's what these support sessions are built in for. So in block two, any student who's called upon from their teacher between 1 and 1.30 will return for a teacher tutoring support session for block two. That's the same class that met at 9.45 in the morning. The same thing is true from 1.30 to 2 o'clock from block three. A question came up last week and then during our freshman orientation, students also have the ability to email the teacher to request the ability to come to these support sessions. Maybe the teacher was unaware that a student wasn't mastering the content and the student felt as though that some additional support might be necessary for them to complete the homework or additional assignments provided by the teacher. The student should send the teacher an email, the teacher will respond, and we can get the student the support that they need in the afternoon. That's the message behind these support sessions. Now, if a student is not contacted by a teacher, or a student doesn't request support from a teacher. The afternoon session is built in for students to have that asynchronous or independent learning format. That's the time that students can complete homework assignments, classwork assignments, or other directions as provided by their teacher. On Thursday, September 17th, we'll follow the day two schedule. So again, we start with that independent format for kids, they can use that first hour of the day to get ready for the school day. But during day two, we will meet blocks four, five, and six. Those are the remaining three classes on the student's schedule. With the support sessions for blocks four, five, and six provided in the afternoon. And then Friday, September 18th will be day three. We will return to blocks one, two, and three. And then the following week, Monday, September 21st, Tuesday, September 22nd, and Wednesday, September 23rd, students will complete days four, five, and six of their academic schedule. And again, this schedule will also be sent home continuously with the parent newsletter during the beginnings of our phase one reopening. Here is a quick summary of the time that is in place for synchronous and asynchronous or student learning that is independent as well as in class. On days one, three, and five, students will follow the schedule on the left of your screen. And on days two, four, and six, students will follow the schedule on the right of your screen. We added a quick schedule as an example for both students and parents. Um, although each of you has seen this before, each of our students has seen this before and been in at Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech following the schedule. So this student, John Smith, has block one, block two, and then blocks three, four, five, and six classes. This student is a sophomore. Sophomores have the trickiest schedule because they are also preparing for the state MCAS assessments, which are currently scheduled to be uh, given in May. So all of our sophomore students take strategies classes in addition to their core content classes. So for John Smith, for this student, during block one on Wednesday, assuming he starts in academics, on day one, he will report to his Math Strategies 2 class. On day three, he will report to his Science Strategies 2 class. And on day five, he will report to his ELA 
strategies to class. That is the only block where the class will change for this student. He, he is in civics during block two, is in geometry during block three, he is in sophomore English during block four, and biology in block five, and history in block six. This slide depicts the trimester dates for the 2020-2021 school year. As we've said a few times tonight, the school year begins on September 16th. That is this Wednesday. The first trimester will conclude on December 15th. The second trimester begins the following day and will run through March 26th. And then the final trimester of the school year, which begin on March 29th, will run until June 15th. At this time, I'd like to call uh, Nurse, Nurse Kroll over so she can talk about some of the symptoms related to the COVID pandemic. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanna review some of the um, symptoms related to COVID. And these are things that if you are exhibiting any of these signs, we would want you to stay home and not come to school. Um, if anybody has a fever of 100 or over, chills or shaking chills, Cough, cough that is due to a no, um, other known cause, such as a, um, a chronic cough. I'm mean, excuse me, not uh, due to another known cause, such as a chronic cough. Any difficulty breathing that people are experiencing, new loss of uh, smell or taste, a sore throat, headache when in combination with other symptoms. So if somebody has a history of migraines, headache will not is not considered a COVID symptom if it's by itself. Muscle aches or body aches. Uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, all the GI symptoms that you can have are considered COVID symptoms. Um, fatigue when in combination with other symptoms. Um, nasal congestion and runny nose, that is not due to other known causes such as allergies. And it does have to be in combination with other symptoms. So if you just have you know, nasal congestion or a runny nose, this isn't something that we would consider strictly COVID. But if you have a sore throat or a headache or any other associated symptom, these uh, are considered COVID symptoms, and we would need you to stay home if you are exhibiting any of those uh, symptoms. So, you know, what do you do if you kind of experience any COVID symptoms? Um, uh, actually, the first bullet point here speaks to the CDC and the use of gaiters. Um, as Mr. Watson had alluded in school expectations, everybody is required to wear a, a mask. Um, you have to wear those on the bus as well as within school, um, but gators are not um, considered uh, proper uh, use um, in the school setting outside um, potentially, but definitely not in the school setting. So if you do have gators, you know, leave them home and bring your other cloth masks. Um, in terms of experiencing COVID symptoms, you would want to call your healthcare provider if you start experiencing any. And if you were truly having an emergency, like uh, increased difficulty breathing, you definitely would call 911. Um, you would want to also inform the school nurse at the office uh, of any uh, symptoms that you may be exhibiting when you're home. And Linda Ferreira, she's one of the school nurses here, as well as myself. And you can see our contact information below. You can email us as well as call us. In terms of symptoms when you're home, you know, we don't want you to come to school. But if, you, if your student does start exhibiting um, signs and symptoms within the school day, they definitely have to come to the nurse, alert the teacher, and they do need to come to the nurse. And we'll work on uh, dismissal protocols with you as guardians and, and family members. And I think this might be my last slide, but I'll, let me just double check. Okay. Are you all set, Mr. Thank you, Ursula. So again, the importance of communication and safety. Emails will become more important than they've ever been between teachers and students, students and administrators, students and counselors, parents, phone calls. Communication is central to us being able to uh, accomplish successfully remote learning. Virtual meetings and in-school meetings, parents and guardians are required that they must schedule a meeting with an individual with who they'd like to meet with. Uh, in-school meetings will be a last resort and for emergencies only. The school is working very hard 
to make sure that we are minimizing the number of additional bodies in the school. Uh, and not that we will not meet with parents or students, we certainly will, but our preference would be to conduct as many of those meetings virtually as we possibly can. On your screen gives you a quick list of who should I contact uh, in the event of medical issues or scheduled surgeries, concussions, emergency situations, COVID-19 questions, quarantining. Uh, Ursula was here tonight. Uh, the nurses' numbers are listed on the screen. And again, we will make this presentation available online and send it uh, remotely to all uh, students via the Messenger app. The IT department for Aspen login questions, emails, Chromebook requests. Uh, the extension will be corrected. It is 383, not 329, 383 for the IT department. Any safety issues, bullying and harassment, discipline issues, exploratory issues for ninth graders. Those conversations will go to the Office of the Assistant Principals and our Security Division, Mr. Robert Pimentel and Mr. Jeffrey Karen. Their emails are on the screen as well. Guidance will be utilized if, if a student is seen at the crisis center or hospitalized, failing multiple students, needs help, uh, McKinney-Vento, homeless students, social, emotional, or mental health issues, anything that a student needs requiring assistance with college applications, we would contact the guidance office. Your child's guidance counselor is listed in the Aspen portal uh, and you, guidance can be reached at either extension 755 or 740. Attendance issues. If your child is absent, as I mentioned earlier, or needs to be dismissed, those calls go to extension 734. Mrs. Nobriga, our attendance supervisor, is also available to assist with any questions. If there are issues regarding your child's class or summer assignments, uh, we can reach the academic office or the classroom teacher to provide supports to parents and students with those questions as well. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Pius, our Information Technology and Digital Learning Director. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Technology has really changed because of COVID and the, the need for technology and how we, how the teaching and learning process occurs on a day-to-day -day, uh, here at New Bedford Volk. Um, you know, the district is doing our our best to meet the needs of teachers, parents, and students. With that said, I'd like to start talking about the Aspen Portal. The Aspen Portal is the website where you can check your grades, your schedules, uh, parents can log in uh, and see how their child is doing here at New Bedford Oak. Just wanna highlight a few things about Aspen. Make sure you use lower, case letters when logging in. Common error is to include uppercase letters. Your account will automatically be logged off when you are inactive for more than 15 minutes. Another common mistake is when parents or students Google the Aspen portal. At times when Googling it, you'll end up in the wrong district's Aspen portal. Students can also access Aspen under the GMBBT Managed Bookmarks if you're using your Chromebook. You can also find the Aspen portal on our website, gmbvt.edu. It's located on the upper right-hand corner on a black bar. The icon looks like a mountain. If students have any issues accessing the portal or parents, uh, just go ahead and email aspen at gnbvt.edu. Just wanted to highlight that the technology use policy is located in our student handbook. Our student handbook is online on our website under students and parents. So please take a look at it when you have an opportunity. Our next Chromebook distribution will be held tomorrow between 9 and 11 a.m. Parents or students are expected to drive into the school, not into the school, but into the, uh, the, the rotary and uh, just have your ID prepared. We'll have the IT staff, we'll have security directing traffic. 
The Chromebook agreement has been emailed to those that requested a Chromebook. We, uh, the district is waiting for an additional 650 Chromebooks. By the end of the school year, the initiative is to go one-to-one -one with Chromebooks. Every student at our school will have a Chromebook. A couple things also about communication. Please check our website often. News updates will always be posted first on our school website. The school also utilizes School Messenger. School Messenger is our program that we use to call parents, students, email, and text. School Messenger app is also an application that you can download from the iOS store or Android store. And that app is a great way of communicating with teachers. Teachers can communicate with parents and students. And another app is our own school district app, GNBVT. And again, all notifications are pushed through that app as well. As well. Another uh, initiative is what we call pulse checks. What the district wants to do is we're going to push out these pulse checks weekly on a Friday. They're about a, a minute long, couple questions. What we're looking for is how are we doing? What can we improve? What are the needs of your child? And then the following week, administration will get together and look at these responses. So your responses do matter. Another initiative that was planned prior to COVID was e-hall pass. What the district is doing is we're going away from using paper passes. An online record of where students are going, uh, how many times they go to point A to point B. Uh, so this also helps us in this situation in the world of COVID. Now we have a paperless pass where there's no contact, a student asks to go to the bathroom, the teacher approves, it's all done on their computer or a kiosk. Uh, so this is a perfect time to implement this e-hall pass. Uh, students will be instructed, instructed on how to use the e-hall pass when they're uh, in shop. Thank you very much, Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Pius. I'm gonna give Mr. Pius a second to kinda of get back in place. We're gonna take some questions, right? That pretty much concludes our presentation for tonight. I'm confident there are some questions awaiting and so we wanna do our best to take a few minutes to address questions that people who are watching the presentation may have. Chances are, if you have that question, someone else We'll have that question as well. And so um, this is the moment to be able to ask those questions so we can try and get the best answers across and hopefully avoid any questions or problems that might come. Let's take the first question. My son is in division one green cohort. And that means he'll be going to school cycle to Right. So if the students in division one, they will begin in academics. Uh, so they will face the first six days, which correct ends on September 23rd. So cycle two, day one, green cohort is September 24th. That is correct. Are students required to use Chromebooks? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, students can use Chromebooks. That is what the district has provided to those students that are in need. But if you have a desktop, laptop, or other device, that will certainly work uh, with their links. Uh, yeah, outside Chromebooks will not be brought into the school, um, but they certainly can be used while remote. Students will be graded in accordance with normal in-person instruction. That is at the di di direction of the commissioner, the Commonwealth. Um, grades will look very different than what they did last year. Grading New Bedford Vogue Tech was actually, I think, uh, ahead of the curve because we did assign student grades 
in trimester three last year where some districts opted for pass fail. Uh, all schools have been told that grades must be provided in high school, that there will not be a pass fail option this year. Do we anticipate going back to six days a week, six days a cycle? And if so, will that happen before academics is in person? Uh, great question. So uh, we're hopeful that we can get all students back currently. And again, all things are fluid in this plan, but currently phase two of our reopening plan would have students returning for full in-person shop days while academics would con would uh, continue remotely. Uh, it is not until phase three where we would begin to phase in in a hybrid fashion uh, student academics. Again, this is a fluid situation. We need to make sure that we're adhering to all guidelines and recommendations from uh, both the state of Massachusetts, Department of Public Health, as well as the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I can tell you tonight that we will remain in phase one uh, at least through Columbus Day. That's four weeks of school, at which time we will be able to assess uh, what public health data looks like in our area as well as progress. It is possible phase one will continue beyond that. Uh, and if there is a change in those phases, it will be communicated to parents, guardians, students, teachers and faculty at some point in early October. Will bus stops and times be the same as they were in the past? Not necessarily. Um, the bus schedule was sent to all parents this afternoon. Uh, it will be posted on the school's website. It was just completed by the bus company. Uh, this is a very challenging time, as I mentioned during some of the comments earlier. The bus guidance that came from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education on July 23rd severely restricted the number of students that can ride a bus at any one time. And so um, it's taken several weeks. That's the reason why we had multiple surveys, which again, we're very appreciative of parents being able to uh, complete those surveys. It has been very helpful in getting us to this point. Uh, again, bus schedules were released today. Uh, bus stops and times may be, or they may have been adjusted slightly. So I would strongly recommend that every, every student parent that is planning to ride the bus reviews uh, that information. How do we know if a student will start academic first or in shock? Great question. So if the student is in division one, that student will start in academics. If a student is in division two, that student will start in shops. Are disposable masks okay to use? Yes, students, we are strongly encouraging students to bring their own mask to school in the event that a student uh, does not have a mask or the mask uh, is in some way breaks during the day, the school does have masks uh, to assist. During academics after 12 o'clock, do students have to be online until 2.30 or is that only for extra help? Um, that will depend on, on where students are. So the, what I told freshmen during their in-person day and I mentioned Thursday night is if a student comes to class 8.30, 9.45 and 11 o'clock, participates productively with the teacher, is regularly passing in the homework and meeting his or her responsibilities, then it is more unlikely that the teacher will request them to return to the support sessions in which case the student can use the afternoon or the evening in an asynchronous or independent learning format. But that will depend on how much progress the students are making during the class period, whether the students are passing in the work that is required. The best advice I can give students who are listening or parents, make sure you are on time, in class, participating in the morning and completing all assignments remotely. Uh, that will give you the, maxim the best chance to maximize your independent learning time in the afternoon. Uh, classes are not being done over Zoom. They will be done either through Google Meet uh, or if a teacher is using uh, Cisco WebEx. The majority of our teachers are beginning with Google Meet. How does online show only shop work? Outside. There's an outside company. Yes. So the district is uh, students who are choosing a fully remote option. Um, the district will be contracting with an outside company uh, for students in their shop area. Those students will be allowed to participate in their academic classes on site with our instructors here. But for shop, if you are exclusively choosing a remote option for shop, uh, we will be contracting through one of the agencies provided from the Department of Ed. My child has gym in trimester one. What will gym class look like remotely? Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely going to run remotely. I uh, saw a glimpse of the trimester one lesson plans. Our, our phys ed and health teachers have worked very, very hard over the last 10 days to try and put meaningful physical education into the classroom. We believe very strongly uh, in educating the whole child. It's not just about their career technical area or just about their English or math class. Uh, physical education and physical health is an important part of a well-rounded education. And so we opted to maintain our health and phys ed classes 
Um, I'm very pleased with the work that our teachers have done, and, I, and I'm hoping that you'll find um, the same. We had a question about some confusion above there. Can you scroll back up for a second there? Still very confused about block day schedule. Okay, so let's let's start with that with that just for a second. The first thing to do is to check is the student in division one or division two. If the student is in division one, they will be starting in academics on Wednesday, and that is completely remotely. If the student is in division two, then they will be starting in their shop. That will include three in-person days and three remote days. So if the student is division two, then I would suggest that the next thing we look at is to determine whether the student is in the green cohort or the gold cohort. So first thing that would be helpful is identify whether the student is in division one or division two. That'll tell us whether they're studying in academics or shop. And then once we have that answer, we can better assist you. I would strongly recommend that if you're confused about that, please contact the school tomorrow, our guidance department, all of the counselors are in, um, and they can assist you in making sure that we're ready for tomorrow, uh, for Wednesday. Uh, what I told the freshmen, I would tell the upperclassmen as well. Uh, and I hope that parents can appreciate this as well. While we are planned uh, as, as much as we can plan, uh, we have to take this one day at a time. And so I encouraged all the freshman students before they left to make sure they knew where they were gonna be on Wednesday, September 16th. And I think that should be a goal for all of us. So if parents or students are unsure about where they're gonna be on Wednesday, I would strongly encourage that they reach out to guidance counselors and people tomorrow so that we can get you ready for Wednesday. Uh, and then we can prepare for the days that follow. I, I'm confident every year students have scheduling questions and every year they figure it out in the first week or so. Um, and that will happen again, even though school's gonna look very different this year. I'm gonna turn this question over to uh, Nurse Ursula. Hi there. So the question is, how do I handle providing meds and EpiPen to the nurse for in-person shop days? So we would just, um, the shop teachers would allow the students to come to the nurse. We are going to be stationed. Um, one nurse is going to be stationed outside the nurse's office, and your student um, will be able to hand over the, the medication as well as the appropriate paperwork to the nurse. And you know, we'll see it through and we'll get um, what you need. But definitely, you'll be able to. Um, your student will be able to come see the nurse. Thank you, Ursula. Uh, just got information about bus transportation in the morning. What about in the afternoon? Do I pick my son up from school? Uh, bus transportation will be provided both in the morning and the afternoon. So the pickup times were provided in the morning. Uh, students who are riding the bus will be dismissed at 2.30, uh, 2.31 in the afternoon. They'll have until about 2.40 or so to be able to get to the bus and the buses will, will go once we're sure all students have exited the building uh, and, and we'll, we'll bring students home. What time do we drop off students at the school when they have their technical education? Um, we will be admitting students into the building after seven o'clock, uh, but bear in mind that students are going to be escort escorted directly into their shop areas. So um, school will officially start. The, the bell goes off at 730. We take attendance in person by 740 a.m. So students uh, will be in their shop area once they're dropped off. There will not be any walking uh, in the loop during phase one. Uh, or you know, socializing in the cafeteria or things of the like. We need to get kids to the area where they need to be uh, as quickly as possible so that we can ensure that all students are safe. Yes, uh, great question. For students who did not take the MCAS last year, will they have to make those up? The answer to that question is yes. Um, currently, the guidance from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is that junior students will be taking their ELA and math MCAS in November and December. Uh, if that changes, uh, we, I assure you that we will notify parents through that through that weekly newsletter. And if I didn't mention at the outset, we've done quite a few of these. Uh, Mr. Watt and I will continue during any remote learning or hybrid learning to send, as we did last spring, a weekly newsletter to all parents and guardians, which will happen uh, on Monday or Tuesday of each week. How do students check in in the morning? Is that the next question? So um, during academics, students will uh, report at 8.30 in the, in the morning for daily attendance and participate in their class as they normally would. The shop remote days um, have that sort of check-in. So between 7.45 and 8 a.m., those students are who are learning remotely in their career technical area 
will be expected to sign on to the link provided by their teacher for attendance purposes. The teacher or teaching assistant will provide the remote assignments to students that need to be completed that day. And there will be two separate check-ins during the course of the day to make sure students are making progress on those assignments. Do students who are driving to school on in-person days need a parking sticker? Yeah. The answer to that question is yes. Assistant. If so, how do students get a hold of one with all that is going on? Uh, they will communicate. With, we will communicate with students, but they will come to the assistant principal's office to get that sticker. We had a couple. Let me take that question up there a little bit. As I said before, yes, some kids learn differently. If a child is struggling with remote learning, how will the school work with the student to ensure they have the opportunity to excel? Um, absolutely. And I, I believe that with every fiber of my being, right? So not everyone learns the same way. Um, kids can learn. Some kids are going to need additional supports to be able to make that happen. So uh, those support sessions in the afternoon are designed to get the class teacher ratio significantly reduced. Um, and you'll note that they also are the same class periods that the student had in the morning. So, for example, on day one in academics on Wednesday will be blocks one, two and three. Then we'll have lunch and there will be support for periods one, two and three in the afternoon. Uh, that additional half an hour, I'm hoping the teachers and students can work collaboratively on any assignments or recap any gaps that may have happened during the lesson so that we can make sure students uh, are making the kind of progress uh, that they need to make. Bus routes and times were posted and released today. Is there an instruction? During live classes, will students be able to see other classmates during live classes? Yes. Um, cameras and microphones will be on uh, during the class period so that the teacher can, in fact, uh, utilize breakout spaces and other areas for students to have work. Remote learning is only half the day. As after lunch, it will be independent or support class. Do students remain logged in until 231? So again, remote learning, the live synchronous classes that are happening are from 830 to 12. But in the second half uh, of the day, there will either be student independent work or there will be the support from teachers. So if a teacher doesn't reach out to a student or a student doesn't reach out to the teacher, um, that may be because the student is mastering the content during the class periods, completing all the homework assignments as assigned by the teacher. And so, yes, that student would then earn the right to have that independent space to be able to make sure they continue to make progress. And so uh, there won't be a check in per se by 231. The check in will come the next class period, whether or not the student continues to pass in the assignments. Um, the, the most sure way to end up being requested to come back with teachers is that students are not completing the assignments in the remote space that that we've instructed teachers that kids who are not completing the assignments are going to be brought back. There's a reason why kids aren't completing the assignments. They're not just not doing it. They likely are struggling with some of the material. and We need to make sure that we're reaching out to those kids on a regular basis. Please clarify a gold student has academics for the first six days and then goes into school for the first or second group of three days for shop. Okay, let's take that one real slow. So if you're starting the year in academics, the green and gold does not matter, okay? There are no cohorts right now for academics. All students who are doing academics are learning remotely. So a gold student has academics for the first six days. We can start right here. That student will not be coming into school from September 16th, to September 23rd, they're doing their academics. Now, given that the school, that the student is gold, on Thursday, September 24th, that student will begin their shop. So the 24th, 25th, and then 28th, the following Monday, that student will be learning their shop remotely. That student will come to school on cycle two, day four, which is Tuesday, September 29th. And if that still needs to be explained, please call the school tomorrow so we can make sure you understand. It's a fantastic question that I'm sure uh, lots of parents um, are, are feeling. I know that this is difficult for us. Can you scroll up a little bit? I saw something about the red zone there. Yes, New Bedford is in a red zone now, so will you eventually revert back to online only? Uh, the school is very much aware that New Bedford is in a red zone. In fact, when that information was released last Wednesday night, we were on the phone with the New Bedford Board of Health on Thursday morning. Uh, we have been assured that the red zone counts currently 
are isolated to a few specific cases, uh, and there were no need to revert to an online format at this time. But uh, I want to assure all parents, all students, that part of the regular weekly updates on Wednesdays, the school is engaged in the conversations of the COVID pandemic in our region. Uh, other questions here. There's a couple of statements that are here. Uh, will there be co-op or placement for all seniors? Co-op is available. Mm -hmm. uh, placement, Mr. Watt? The placement we're working on right now, but um, we're not, we'll go into the placement. Co-op will be first. Okay. Co-op is definitely off and running in a lot of our career technical areas. There have been agreements signed with some places. Placement, uh, we'll provide some further guidance on that when it's available. We are working on that um, as we as we speak. So bus assignments, uh, not on a first come first serve basis. What we're trying to do is make sure that we can get every student to school. It's another one of the reasons for the more cautious start. Uh, what we know is about two thirds of our students, a little less than two thirds of our students require bus transportation um, as delineated through the parent surveys over the summer. Um, we know the number of buses that we have. We've worked with the bus company to make sure with the guidelines that we can get every student who needs a ride to bus to school uh, on the bus. Um, uh, during phase one of our reopening plan. Now that will be a factor as we discuss going to phase two of our reopening plan at some point in October, if public health guidance continues to be able to push us that way. So that's, uh, you know, none of this is easy on any of us, both at home or parents, uh, students, administrators, teachers, uh, that will all be part of the calculation before we make any announcement and change in phases. Okay, I'm gonna turn this next question on Chromebooks to Mr. Pius. Thank you, Mr. Watt. So the question is, do we need to bring anything to pick up Chromebooks? The, uh, the answer is uh, yes, you need to have your ID ready. Someone will ask you for your ID number and it'll record your ID along with the Chromebook. Uh, one thing that you need to do prior to arriving is filling out the Chromebook agreement form. That form was sent to anyone that requested a Chromebook uh, prior to the Chromebook distribution days. So again, just fill out that form. It's an electronic form. This way, there's a, it's a no contact um, distribution of Chromebooks. Thank you. Let's see what else we have. We're developing classes now. Yes, yeah, so the outside company for the remote vocational experience, you will be hearing from the school shortly if you've uh, decided to choose that option. Um, some of those courses are still being uh, finalized by the company, but you, you, you will receive contact from the school very shortly. Uh, links are being sent, I believe, to the school email, yes, for, for classes. Say they send another bus. Yeah, I'm, I'm so uh, there's a question there about bus stops and uh, capacities on buses. Um, you know, that that's not the plan. We have provided the bus companies a list of all of the information we've spoken to you folks about green and gold cohort, shop days, not days, and uh, have no reason to believe that students who are waiting at the bus stop, provided they're at the bus stop at the correct on the correct days, uh, will not be able to get a ride to school. Uh, we believe that that will, will in fact be the case. Um, obviously, if there's an issue related to that, we're going to need you to call the school and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take the appropriate steps. But again, the, the priority would be making sure that all parents understand uh, which days their students are expected to be in person. And so there are questions for that. Please make sure you reach out to your guidance counselors or the school tomorrow so that we can try to help. Yep, so what website do you check in on? Google Classroom? Yes, yeah, we're using Google Classroom in the majority of our uh, classes. Apologize if I missed it. Uh, what does that say there? Are there restrictions? Uh, so masks, uh, gators have just recently been, the information has just recently arrived to the school uh, regarding gators, um, that they are not uh, to be used, that we students should have an actual mask covering their nose and mouth. Um, that information just became available to us 
for me, I think it was this week, yeah. Ursula. Yeah. Um, in fact, we had purchased Gatiss to distribute to all students um, and probably will continue to do that in case students want to wear them in addition to uh, in addition on top, to, of on top of their mask or outside. But uh, at school, yes, masks will be required. Okay, All right, I'm going to pass that this next question on Chromebooks back to Mr. Pies. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Question is, will Chromebooks be needed to bring to shop? As of right now, we're not fully one to one uh, with Chromebooks, so not every student will have a school issued Chromebook. Uh, as soon as we have that in place, students will be expected to bring their Chromebooks to shop in when we get to the point where there are in academics in the building, they'll, they'll be expected to bring that Chromebook into school every single day. It's just another form uh, of, it's similar to a textbook, it's just an electronic version uh, of a textbook, and they'll be able to access the school's network through the school issued device. So there's a couple of questions here. Yes, during live classes, students will be able to see their classmates. Um, there are some questions regarding the IEP. Uh, those questions will be referred to uh, Mrs. Dzinski in the Special Services Office. Um, likely you've had contact there or can have contact there. Feel, feel free to reach out if you have any concerns regarding the IEP. How can we assure students are prepared to pass MCAS? They seem to have lost important instructions due to COVID. Yes, uh, you know, we, we agree. Um, so what we have done at this point is uh, focused on where those expectations lie for the state. So all junior math and English teachers uh, have been directed to continue with the work that's been done in strategies classes during the sophomore year that kids may have missed uh, in order of preparation. Uh, whether we like it or not, the MCAS remains a graduation requirement in public high schools in Massachusetts. And so as long as that is the standard, I want to assure parents, students, uh, et cetera, that the district will work as hard as they can to make sure that students meet with that success. And uh, it's not a secret that it's one of the proudest accomplishments we've had over the last few years. In fact, uh, during the last year we had the test, there were zero students who did not uh, meet that competency determination in math and ELA. So we are working very, very hard to make sure uh, that students meet with success in their first go around. Um, and we agree that um, it, it's, it's difficult. Uh, I want to assure you that it is not a district decision that that test will be done in November and December for juniors. That is a state decision that will happen at Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech and every other public high school in Massachusetts, unless the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education makes a change. Um, and as soon as that information is available, we'd certainly let you know. When children are in school for shop, will they still be able to eat breakfast at school? The answer to that question is yes, while we are encouraging students to eat breakfast uh, at home, if that is possible, there is breakfast that will be available at school. It will look very, very different. Uh, than what it's looked like in the past. Students will not be allowed to sit at tables or walk around in circles for extended periods of time. They will be socially distanced, um, have a few minutes to be able to eat. It's a grab and go breakfast. It's going to look very different than what it did in the past, but yes, breakfast and lunch will be provided at school. We currently do not need bus transportation. This is another great question, but if needed in future months, can it or will it be, be available? Yes, the school's gonna work with, with folks um, as transportation needs change. None of us can predict the future with regards to the pandemic or needs that may exist. We're certainly going to do our best to try and assist uh, families uh, through this endeavor. I know that there are some folks who've reached out around multiple bus stops. That of course has been very difficult at the outset of this. Um, in order to make sure that we can provide transportation to every student. But we're going to do everything that we can do to try and help families uh, through this. What does a home laptop need to have loaded besides Google prior to Wednesday morning? Nothing more. That is all that would be required. Again, the bus schedules come up again. That bus schedule was sent home to all parents today. It is, will be posted uh, on, the, on the school website, should already be posted on the school website. If it is not, it will be very, very shortly. What about school supplies? Will there be a list? Yes, yeah, so teachers will let you know of any school supplies that are necessary during their initial class meetings. Um, obviously, the remote learning and academics will uh, push a lot of teachers and students into the technology 
uh, platform, which is a direction that the school was moving before COVID. Uh, anyway, this is certainly uh, accelerating that move. And um, I have been upstairs. I have seen teacher lesson plans. I'm encouraged by the work that they have done. They are working very, very hard. Um, and I'm confident that our students will work very, very hard as well. And so um, we, we just have to work together. This won't be won't be easy for anybody, but uh, we'll take it one day at a time, one step at a time, and we'll do the best that we can. Can children bring in lunch from home? What is, I'm sorry, I missed that question. So can children bring in lunch from home? I mean, students are allowed to bring in their lunch from home, so they'll be, they'll be able to eat their lunch. Okay, that pretty much wraps up um, our questions that are here. Um, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out again to the school tomorrow, um, and we're happy to assist in any way that we can. Thank you very much for joining us.